we are getting ready to get into the meat and potatoes of the Mac. We are at the point where little details shouldn't be necessary. We've taught you navigations, both quick nav and with the VO keys, how to get around your Mac, how to look into your menus, and things of that nature. So this is going to be, I'm not going to say a fast lesson, but it's going to be a steady pace. So if you need to fast forward, rewind, pause, whatever the case may be, you know, get ready for that. Because this is going to be a, a long session and I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. But it's not going to be baby steps. It's going to be expecting you to know what we've already taught to get you through and find what you need. That being said, let's get right into today's lesson. All right, welcome to, I guess this is session number five of More with the Mac. <clears throat> We're going to jump into mail. I'm going to try to make this as detailed as possible. Show you what you need to know. If there's other stuff that you want to know, it may require um, a paid session. Or it may be something I can show quick on the fly with a screen share. So, you know by now, I have the commander. So let's launch mail. Mail. Send. Start up personal. Three. All right. I think we will start in the preferences. Because how can you receive and read mail if you don't know how to set your preferences up properly? As you know, command comma will take you to your system preferences. Preferences. General. Window. And we're already on general, which is where we need to be. Um, we will go through each individual item in these preferences. I'm not going to touch on everything, but I will talk about and show you a few things in here. Toolbar. All right. Toolbar all the way to the left. General. General is what's selected. So that's to the left of the toolbar. To the right of the toolbar is. Tool default email reader. Your default email reader. I mean, this goes back to the phrase that we say is personal preference. Because some people use third-party email clients like Outlook, Thunderbird, and I don't. I think there's a Gmail app for the Mac. If it ain't Apple, I'm not using it. So mine is mail default email reader. Mine is my button. mine is my mail app. Let me see if there's even any other choices in here. Menu check select ellipsis. Select ellipsis. No, it gives you the option to select, but I don't have any third party selected, so there's not going to be none anyway. Mail. Default email reader. Pop up button. All right. And then you heard him say pop up button. That just means it's a combo box, drop down, whatever you want to call it. Check for new messages. This is how often you want your mail client when it's open to check for messages. Automatically. Check for new messages. Pop up button. Mine said to automatically, but as usual, let's see what your other choices are. Menu check mark or check mark automatically every minute, every five minutes, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, manually. All right, so you can go all up to an hour and or check manually, which the command for that would be command shift in, as in Nancy, command shift in to check manually. Automatically check for new messages. Pop all right. up button. New messages sound. New messages sound. Exclaim. New messages sound. Pop up button. That's a custom sound that I have. I'm not even going to attempt to go in here and show you what different sounds there are because you're not going to hear them anyway. Just explore what's on your system um, on your own. There is a way to get custom sounds in here. But again, that's not a quick hitter. That's a paid training. And I would rather you be a little more advanced before you did something like that because it causes you digging into your library and uh, converting files to um, different file formats and things of that nature so we're not there yet unchecked play sounds for other mail actions checkbox this is play mail for other mail sounds mine is unchecked because i think the default is the inbox and that's all i needed to play it for doc unread count oh doc unread count let's see what the other choices are all right that is okay inbox only doc unread count pop up button. new message note inbox only Doc yep. unread count. Yep, mine is, set for, mine is set for inbox only. Let's see what other choices are. Are you going to open? Menu check mark inbox only. All mailboxes. Today. Today. So all inboxes or your today. And mine is, again, is set for inbox only. I have too many custom 
uh, mailboxes with sorting rules. I don't want to hear all that. Inbox only. Doc on red count. Pop up button. You'll see that when I show you my mailbox list. Anyways, next setting is new message notifications. Inbox only. New message notifications. Pop up button. And that would be if I had my messages shown in a notification center it would be inbox only anyway but as you know from a previous demonstration I think it was on the interactive session last week or maybe it was the actual class session either way it goes I don't have my mail show up in notification center um, I don't need to because I check my email often enough where I don't need to notify me of a, a, a message or whatever downloads folder downloads downloads folder pop-up button okay this is if I get an uh, attachment that I save where do I want it to go and mine is set to the menu download downloads folder downloads. and you can also have it go other ellipses you can pick other other ellipses and actually I'm going to pick other here because I have an, a, a folder on my desktop or in my home folder that's specifically for email attachments so let's go pick that folder other down in open list view table vertical list view table interact here in attachments folder collapsed and that's exactly what folder it is it's called attachments and it's in my home folder so i will hit enter or veal spacebar here attachments downloads folder pop-up button so now from now on whenever i save an attachment i don't even have to look at where it's going to be saved because i know it's going to go to my attachments folder so that's what that is remove unedited downloads after message is deleted remove unedited downloads pop-up button that's for security reasons for me if there's an attachment if I get an attachment from somebody I know I want it to be gone as soon as I delete it but let me show you what your other choices might be menu check check mark after when mail quits never never so when mail quits never and when message is deleted unchecked archive or delete muted messages checkbox all right archive or delete um what does that say At unchecked archive or delete muted messages checkbox oh yeah archive or um deleted messages which mine is unchecked i don't want it archived i will delete it checked automatically try sending later if outgoing server is unavailable checkbox that means if you have more than one mail account um if the account that you're trying to send from is Server is busy or something, it will try later automatically. Mine is checked. Unchecked. Prefer opening messages in split view when in full screen. Checkbox. Personally, I have no idea what that means. I'm totally blind. I can't see the screen. And the way mine is set is just fine. So that's unchecked by default. And I'm going to leave it that way. When searching all mailboxes, include results from checked trash. Checkbox. All right. So when you're searching for messages with command F, you can have these mailboxes automatically searched mine is inbox unchecked junk checkbox junk I don't if it's going to junk that's where it needs to be unchecked encrypted messages en checkbox encrypted messages I don't get any so whatever help button and that is when you get to the help you know you're at the end of the preferences help button and that sound tells you so so let's go back to the top just a quick reminder back to the top if you have the um Apple Magic Bluetooth keyboard without the numpad. You want to push the bottom three keys all the way to the left, which is voiceover and the function key, and it takes you back to toolbar. The toolbar. And let's interact there. Into general. Selected button. Accounts button. Alright, this is accounts. Account selected. I'll just talk about this because all my accounts are configured. Um basically, I don't even I mean, I guess I know why it's here. I guess you can you can change the name of the account so if your Gmail or your Outlook or your Yahoo doesn't have the name that you want listed on there you can change that in here once the account is set up but ultimately you set up your um, accounts in system preferences under internet accounts even if you attempt to do it from here that's where it's gonna take you um, most email third-party email clients are going to take you to the website to authenticate anyway before it gives your Mac permission the only one that's not going to do that is iCloud but it does send you a, a six-digit code to one of your other devices to make sure it's you and that you approve it so again um, and you can also do mailbox behaviors in here I'll show you that one Junk mail button. but as for the accounts that's I can't really show you nothing in here uh, except let me account, see. account information Select Internet Accounts, Table, iCloud, iMap, 
Okay. Selected. It's on iCloud and I use iMap, not POP3. Account information. Selected. Tab. One of three. All right. It's on account information right now. And then there's... Mailbox behaviors. Tab. Two of three. That's mailbox behaviors. That's basically telling your mail client how often you want mailbox mailbox to do something like how often to empty trash where to send deleted items where to put drafts where to put sent items so i'm not even going to go into that tab server settings tab three of three server settings once you set up your credentials with your username and password there's no need to go in there checked enable this account checkbox all right so that account my icloud account is enabled of course status online tells me that it's online available image i'm available i guess description now here's the description it says icloud content selected description edit text now you heard it say edit text i could change this if i wanted to like put if i have more than one icloud account or if i just wanted to be fancy with it and say cliff's icloud or whatever the case may be so that's what you can do there email address I'm not going to let it read that because I don't know what my personal email address. You have support at ttjtech.net if you need to get a hold of us. Download attachments. All. Download attachments. It's, Pop up button. This says download all attachments. Let's see what our other choices are. Menu check mark all. Check mark all. Recent. None. None. I can have it on recent or none. All. Down. Checked. Send large attachments with mail drop. Checkbox. Now, that's very important because if you have an attachment that's you know pretty big over some certain megabytes it's going to use mail drop and it doesn't matter if you're sending it to an apple user or not they'll get a link to download it directly to their device and be done with it new account button and i could i could hit new account here and like i said even if you do it in here it's going to take you to system preferences and internet accounts i guess for having to navigate to system preferences and select internet accounts and then add new account you can eliminate a couple of those steps by doing it this way, but ultimately you got to open mail, go to system preferences, and select account. So it's ultimately the same amount of steps anyway. So back to the toolbar. Toolbar. In toolbar, 10 items, junk mail, button, accounts, selected, but junk mail. Button. All right, junk mail, that's pretty self explanatory. Junk mail selected. I don't even know how many things is in here because these are one of them things that you set it and forget it for me. Uh, junk mail behaviors, selected, tab, one of two. Blocked tab two of two. All right, so you have junk mail behaviors and blocked. We're not going to look at my blocked list because if you're in that list, then I don't want mail from you. And I have mine set to go directly to the trash, so I don't even see it. So let's see what junk mail behaviors is. Checked. Enable junk mail filtering checkbox. Yes, junk mail filtering is on. When junk mail arrives. Now this is what it does when it arrives. Mark as junk mail, but leave it in my inbox. Radio button. That radio button is not checked. Move it to the junk mailbox. Selected radio button. That one is selected. So if it's marked as junk, I saw automatically going to the junk. And I look at my junk folder every now and again, but I'll look at the subject. But nine times out of ten, I won't read it unless it's something that I recognize and I can mark it as not junk. Perform custom actions. Click advanced to configure radio button. Yep. And I don't have mine configured. So the following types of messages are exempt from junk mail filtering. All right, he said the following messages are exempt from mail junk or junk mail filtering, which is checked sender of messages in my contacts checkbox. Obviously, so if the sender's in my contacts, they won't be marked as junk. Checked sender of messages in my previous recipients checkbox. Previous recipients makes sense. Checked messages addressed using my full name checkbox. Well, if you know my full name, then I guess I know you. Checked trust junk mail headers in messages checkbox. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. I guess if it's a header that of something that I've already done, it's going to not mark it as junk. Unchecked. Filter junk mail before applying my rules. Checkbox. Filter junk mail before applying my rules, which is not necessary. Reset button. And then you can reset it. Advanced. Dimmed button. Advanced is dimmed because I haven't selected it. Help button. And we're at the end. Back to the toolbar. Toolbar. Interact. In toolbar. Fonts and colors button. I'm assuming this is probably a visual thing, but let's go in here and see what's, Fonts what's, and what's colors all selected. this is all about. Uh, plain text font. Plain, plain text font. Plain text font. In plain system font regular 11. Select button. So it's already set at the default. Message font. Message font. Helvetica 12. Helvetica 12, whatever that means. Select button. You can select that too. Fix with font. Menlo regular 11. Select button. 
unchecked use fix with font for plain text messages checkbox checked color quoted text checkbox color quote your text i guess purple first level message body level one level two level three teal second level quoted text pop-up button they've added some stuff here because i don't remember this many options being in colors and fonts personally green third level help button all right then that's the end so this is a visual thing you want to make your messages look all cute and fancy with different colors hey to each their own back to the toolbar almost dropped my coffee message list font out of toolbar plain text font plain text toolbar in toolbar viewing button viewing here we go viewing selected now we're getting down to the nitty degree out of toolbar list preview Let's preview. None. Let's preview. Pop up button. <laughs> now this is personal preference, but basically what this means is when you go to a message, and you're going through your email. You can have it read you the first couple of lines. Uh, how many? What's your choices here? Menu check mark none. Cause mine is on none. Yeah. If I see the subject and I want to read it, then I open it. If not, it just gets deleted. I don't need to see the first couple of lines. But let's see what your choices are. Check mark none. Check mark one line, two lines, three lines. Four lines, five lines, five lines. I mean, maybe it's just me, but by the time you get to three or four lines, isn't that pretty much the whole email? Anyways, you can have it all the way up to five lines. Mine is on none. None. Less preview. Move discarded messages into trash. Move discarded messages into pop up button. I'm assuming you can change where you where deleted messages go. So let's see what your choices are. Menu check archive. Archive. Okay, so you can archive it or trash it. Mine goes to the trash. Trash. Move. Show message headers. Default. Show message headers. Pop up button. Now, this is the on default. You can create a custom header. I've never had success with that. If you want to poke around and try that, more power to you. I'm fine with the way that mine looks. Unchecked. Display unread messages with bold font. Checkbox. Unchecked. Bold font. Can't see it. Don't care. Unchecked. Use smart addresses. Checkbox. It says use smart addresses, and I think there's a help tag after this here. Turn this off to always display names and addresses. Yep, so it says if you have this off, it'll always display names and addresses. I guess if it's on, then it won't. I've never changed it, so I don't know. I couldn't tell you how that is displayed. View conversations. Checked. Highlight messages with color when not grouped. Checkbox. I guess it highlights conversations that are not grouped. I don't know. I, mine are always grouped, so. Dark slate gray. Conversation highlight color well. <laughs> I guess that's the color that highlights when it's not a conversation. Use the view menu to group messages by conversation. Okay. That's an important thing. He said again. Dark slate. Use the view menu to group messages by conversation. It says use the view menu to group messages by conversation. And the way, the reason I think it does that is because people create custom mailboxes and it's not. I mean, it's universal across the board how it is, but you can have individual mailboxes. Like, you can have your inbox sort newest to oldest, which I do. And then you can have your receipts folder sort oldest to newest. Or, you know, you can have it sort by subject. You can customize each individual mailbox. That's why it's telling you to use the view, the view menu to group messages by conversations along with other things that are in the view menu we'll look at those a little bit later on checked include related messages checkbox Incru include related messages which means if it's a conversation say you responded to a message on friday but somebody replies to it on sunday it will if it's still in your sent or trash mailbox it will continue to group them those conversations together even though you've already read it unchecked mark all messages as read when opening the conversation checkbox Mine is unchecked, so basically it's letting you know if you don't open that message, even though it's in a conversation, it won't mark it as read. Unchecked. Show most recent message at the top. Checkbox. Yeah. Most recent message at top. Mine is unchecked because I like to customize mine anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I guess if I check this box, it'll be like that across the board, but mine is already set the way that I want it anyway, so. Help button. And that is the last one. Back to the toolbar. Toolbar. Interact. Toolbar. Composing button. Composing. Composing selected. All right. Composing. Out of composing. Message format. Rich text. Message format. Pop up button. I don't even need to go in here because I already know what the other choice is. It's either rich, rich text or plain text. Again, a visual thing. Some people 
prefer to change this? I don't. Check spelling. Check spelling. As I type, check spelling. Pop up button. My spelling and get the greatest, so I let it check my spelling as I type. So let's see what the other choices are. Menu check mark. Check mark as when I click send. When you when I click send, it'll check it. Never. Or never. Never. As I type, check spelling. Pop up button. Now I'll just give you a, a heads up. If you have the option of when I click send, then it's going to show you each misspelled word and give you suggestions. Uncheck automatically checkbox. CC pop up button. Automatically CC myself. I don't want a copy of every message that I send, so mine is unchecked. Myself. Addressing. Checked when sending to a group. Show all member addresses. Checkbox. This is kind of misleading. Um, because if you send to a group, at least when I send to a group, I put it in a BCC field, so nobody else is going to see it anyway. But I guess you can uncheck this box to un to to hide people's email addresses and maybe it just shows their name if you don't put it in the BCC field. BCC stands for Blind Carbon Copy. Um, CC is Carbon Copy, which means anybody else you send it to will see it. Or you can just use the to field. Unchecked. Mark addresses not ending with. Checkbox. Mark addresses not ending with. Now, I guess this is a way to mark addresses that are certain domains like he's about to tell you. Domain at example.com. At example.org. Dimmed text. Send new messages from. This is where you pick which address you want to send um, email from. Automatically select best account. Send and new messages from. Pop up button. That means automatically sec select best account, which basically means whatever inbox you're in is going to send it from. But you can also change it too. Menu check mark. Check mark. Auto start up productions at Cliff Miller Senior. K Clifton Senior. Start up support team. Support at S D U R I T U P. Send a new message. You get the idea. So basically, you can select. You can either have automatically select best account, or you can pick the accounts you want to send from, no matter where you are. Automatically select best account. Send responding. Automatically responding. Checked. Use the same message format as the original message checkbox. So when you respond to a message, it'll use the same format that that message was sent to you in. Respond using rich or plain text. Checked. Quote the text of the original message checkbox. Quote the original text, which means it's going to put. Checked. Increase quote level checkbox. Increase quote level, which means it's basically going to uh, make the text bigger, I guess. When quoting text and replies or forwards. When quoting replies, text or forwards, then you can include all of the original message text. Selected radio button. You can include their uh, entire message. Include selected text, if any. Otherwise, include all text. Radio button. I don't even know I'm telling you. He's telling you everything you need to know. Help button. And that is it. So let's go back to the toolbar. Toolbar. And toolbar. Signatures button. Signatures. Signatures out of toolbar. All right. This is um. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. You basically put a signature on each account that you want to have a signature for. Um, I have 10 or 11 signatures, and I have them pretty much on different accounts. There's a way to move them around the account so you don't have to. I used to think that you had to repeat. You had to make each signature twice if you wanted it on two accounts, but that is not the case. Um, you basically just got to drag and drop. But the bottom line is... When you create a new signature, make sure you're in the account because you have choices here. Signatures table, row one of ten. All signatures selected. All right, all signatures. Do not create a signature there thinking it's going to show up on all your accounts. Again, that's not the way it works. So we're going to interact with this table. In signatures table, row iCloud. My iCloud account, if I create a signature, that's where it'll show up. Stir it up personal. My stir it up personal. Stir it up support. Stir it up support, and you get the idea. Again, there's a way to make sure that all account or a signature shows up on different accounts. So I want I want my one of my signatures that I have in all signatures to show up in under my stir it up support. So when I send somebody an email for the question that they've sent me, then I can put the signature on so I'm gonna show you how that's done I'm gonna do this you know one time if you need to re-listen to it rewind as needed 
So, what you'll do is make sure you go to all signatures. Add a vertical split. Stop interacting. Names, table, row 1 of 12. Podcast channel, selected. Alright, this is my uh, signatures table. In names, table, row 1 of 12. Now, the signature I want, I'm pretty sure, is all the way at the bottom. So, I'm just going to do my go to end command, which is VO function in the right arrow. Podcast and YouTube sync, row 12. Alright, that's the signature that I want. Now, what I'm going to do here is make sure that my VO cursor is right above it. To do that, alright, so now that I'm on the signature that I want, I want to double check to make sure that it's um, under the mouse or under the cursor. So I'm going to use F5 in the VO command uh, keys. And it's going to tell me podcast and YouTube sync edit text all right that tells me that that's under the mouse so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn voiceover cursor tracking off to do that I'm gonna use F3 VO function and the shift key cursor tracking off all right now that that's off I got to use the voice down, or not the voice, I'm sorry, the mouse down command, which is VO command shift space bar. Mouse down on podcast and YouTube sync, edit text. This is another, and he just told me what was selected, which is excellent because that's what I want selected. Now, I stop interacting with the table. Out of names, table. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a little sliding gesture going, letting me know that I'm dragging something vertical splitter signatures table row one of ten all signatures all right he told me that I'm on all signatures that's not the one I want so I'm gonna interact in signatures table row one of ten I'm gonna go all down to my all go, signatures go down to my stir it up support iCloud stir it up personal stir it up support all right it says that I'm on stir it up support and I'm gonna repeat the mouse down command but now it's gonna be the mouse up command with VO command shift Space bar. Mouse up on. Stir it up support. And it says stir it up support. That tells me that I put that signature on that account so now that I can use it. But to double check, I'm going to turn voiceover tracking back on. Stir it up support. Text row 4 is in the voiceover cursor. Cursor tracking on. Alright, voiceover tracking back on. And again, that's VO shift F3. And if you don't have your function keys checked, add the function key. Now I'm going to go back to my voiceover or my signatures table. Stir it up personal. Stir it up support. All right. There's stir it up support. I'm going to stop interacting and go see if that signature has been added. At vertical split. And more than likely to be at the top. Names table. Row one of five. Podcast and YouTube sync selected. And, and there it is. Again, this is a little bit of an advanced feature that I decided to show you, but I didn't want you to have to go through the same thing I went through, thinking you had to copy and paste signatures three or four times. No, you create the signature once in the account where you want it, but if you want it on an additional account, like a Gmail, Outlook, whatever, you'll repeat the procedure that I just went through. So, and there's always the new button vertical splitter follow my podcast add button I'm sorry the add button that's where you would go to add a new signature um nah I don't need to do that it's pretty self-explanatory once you hit the add button you'll name it stop interacting with the names table go over to the edit field write your signature and you're pretty much done no saving just close it but over here to the right remove button you can remove this signature Checked. Always match my default message font checkbox. That means it'll match the text that's in the current message. Choose signature. Choose signature. None. Choose signature. Pop up button. Now, this is where you can have what you want your default signature to be every time you send a message. I don't have mine checked because I usually pick a different one depending on who I'm sending it to or who I'm replying to. So that is signatures toolbar and in the toolbar and tool rules button now here's rules rules so out of rules I'm not even gonna show you how to do this because number one I don't do it very often and they may have changed some things but the thing I will tell you is if you create a rule on your Mac it's only gonna apply 
to your Mac. You can't set a rule here to say have all messages from more with the Mac go into my resources folder. You can do that, but it's only going to apply when you open up mail on your Mac. It's not going to sync across your phone. It's not going to sync across your iPad. It's not going to sync on the web when you open your email there. So if you want your mail to sort across the board, you have to set your rules up on the website, whether it be iCloud, Gmail, Outlook, or Microsoft, whatever they're calling themselves as they, these days. And I have no experience with any other clients like AT&T or Yahoo, AOL, or like that. I can, I mean, I'm familiar with Gmail, Outlook, and um, iCloud, but none of the other ones. So, if you want your mail to sync, your mail rules to sync across devices, do it on the web interface. Back to the toolbar. Toolbar. And extensions button. Extensions. These. This is a new thing for Big uh, Monterey, extensions and I have button. none. Empty table. My extensions are empty. I have no extensions that I use with Mail, but I think there's one for Outlook, um, for the for the calendar, and I think there's another one for uh, Gmail for your address book or something like that. I don't use any extensions. Again, if it ain't Apple, I ain't using it. So toolbar. Back to the toolbar. Into privacy button. Privacy button. All right, and privacy is the last thing in the system preferences. Privacy, privacy. Uh, mail privacy protection. Checked protect mail activity checkbox. It says protect mail activity, and why wouldn't I? And let's see what he tells us after that. Mail privacy protection works by hiding your IP address and loading remote content privately in the background, even when you don't open the message. This makes it harder for senders to follow your mail activity. Learn more. Checked protect ma mail privacy protection works by hiding your IP address and loading remote content privately in the background, even when you don't open the message. This makes it harder for senders to follow your mail activity. Learn more. Now, why wouldn't anybody want to do that? That's definitely a, a plus. Dimmed checked hide IP address checkbox. It's already it's dimmed because I already have mail protection on, so of course it's already hiding my IP address. Dimmed unchecked block all remote content checkbox. Block all remote content. No need since it just told me about the privacy protection thing above. Help button. And that is it. Toolbar. That is mail preferences. Next, we're going to look at the file menu. As you know, VOM to get to your file menu or to your uh, menu bar. Menu bar, Apple. That's, of course, the old Apple menu. And, of course, you know whatever app you're in is going to be the next one. So, it will say mail it says mail <laughs> all right so let's go to the file menu file and vo down or arrow down however you choose to do it file new message command n new viewer window command option n open messages command o close command w save command s save as ellipsis command shift s attach files ellipsis command shift a Save attachments ellipsis command option S. All right, I'm going to stop there. Don't look for this command in your file menu. That's a custom one that I created, so it's telling me what it is just in case I forgot, but that will not be in your uh options unless you set that custom uh shortcut yourself. Import from iPhone or iPad. Quick look attachments ellipsis command Y. Import mailboxes ellipsis. Export as PDF ellipsis. Print ellipsis command P. Print ellipsis command P. So you got your standard stuff in there. Again, command N is going to give you a new anything. I don't care where you are on the Mac. Um, command O, it said you can open messages that way. You can also open 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 them with uh, enter. And command W to close the message. Um, that's pretty standard. Or I guess you can go to the close button. Somebody says you can use escape. I've never tried it that way, so maybe you can. So let's go over to the edit menu. Edit. This is pretty standard. Undo command Z. Redo command shift Z. Cut command X. Copy command C. And obviously this is when you're working with text. Paste command V. Delete command delete. Select all command A. Complete option escape. 
Paste as quotation command shift V. Paste and match style command shift option V. Okay, so this this is basically when you're working with text. Open selected messages command add link ellipsis command K. Add link. That's basically if you have a URL and you wanted to say click here, you would write the word click here. Do what do you just say? Oh, add link ellipsis command K. Command K. It'll pop up a dialog. Ask you what you want the URL to be, and this is for, of course, after text is already selected. View. The view menu. This is definitely where I want to go to next. Show tab bar. Show tab bar, which I don't. Show all tabs. Show all tabs. Sort by. Sort by. This is what I was talking about. You can do this in each individual mailbox. Sort by attachments. Attachments, which I don't. Check mark date. By date. Flags. I don't use flags. From. From. Size. Subject. To. Unread. Oldest message on top. As you can see, oldest message on top is not selected in this mailbox, but I do have it that way in my inbox. Checkmark newest message on top. So, the newest message is on top in this particular mailbox. Checkmark newest message on top. View sort by filter. You can set filters. Filter. Enable message filter. Command L. So Command L would be the, the shortcut for that. Include. Checkmark unread. Flagged. Addressed. To me. CC me. Only mail with attachments. Only from VIP. Only from VIP. View. Filter. Filter. Enable message filter. Include. Checkmark unread. All right, I went back in there so you can see that unread is the only filter that I have selected because I really don't search for search my mail or filter it that way. If I want it sorted in a certain way, I do it myself. View filter. Use column layout. Use column layout. This is used to be called classic view, but they call it column layout now. And basically, what that does is instead of your messages being, I mean, I think they're still grouped by uh, thread. But it gives you columns, so it'll be from, to, subject, and then the message. And I guess that gives you a better, a cleaner, I guess, outline of going through your subjects without opening up the messages. I really don't know because I do not care for it. It makes the screen a lot more cluttered, and it gives you more things to view right and left arrow through or um, tab through if you choose to use that method. Um, column view for me though is not recommended if you like your mail organized neatly. Show side preview. Show side preview that's not checked for me. Again, I think it's a visual thing. Mailbox. Yep, it must view. be. Yep. Show date and time. Show to CC label. Show to CC label. Show message size. Show contact photo. Highlight conversations. Check mark organized by conversation. See? This, you can have this checked or unchecked, organized by conversation. Mine is checked because I like mine organized by conversation or thread, whatever way you want to look at it. But if this is unchecked, it won't show them by conversation or thread. And again, this is something you can do. Expand all conversations. You can, this is something, that's something you can do in each individual mailbox. Expand all conversations. Mine is not checked because I like mine collapsed until I want to read them. Collapse all conversations. CC address field. You can come in here to get the CC address field. Check mark BCC address field. Command option B. And he just gave you the command for it. So if you want BCC, it's command option B. Command option B to, to show the BCC field. Reply to address field. Command option R. Message. Hide related messages. Hide sidebar command control S. Hide toolbar command option T. And I don't recommend this. What's this one up here? Hide, hide related messages. Hide sidebar command control S. Command control S. That's going to ultimately take away options that you're used to seeing. So that's one that I would not recommend. Hide toolbar command option T. Toolbar. You can hide it. Yeah, it's personal preference. I know how to do everything that's on the toolbar, but I usually leave it there just for a starting point. Customize toolbar ellipsis. And you can customize it. Show favorites bar command shift option H. Command sh 
What does he say? Cust show favorites bar command shift option H. Command shift option H. Enter full screen F. Enter full screen F. And full screen. We'll go over favorites later on, but they're basically ways to get to your mailboxes quick with command and one through nine. Alright, it's back to the top. Show tab bar. View. View. Mailbox. Mailbox. Take all counts online. Make sure all your counts are online. Take all counts offline. You can take them offline. Get all new mail command shift N. Like I told you, command shift N will check for new mail. Synchronize all accounts. Synchronize all accounts. Mark all messages as red. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can mark them all as red. Online status. Online status. Online status. Take iCloud offline. Take start up personal offline. Take start up support offline. So it's basically telling me that all my accounts are online, and if I want to take them offline, I could. Mailbox on get new mail. And get new mail, which is command shift in, like we said. Synchronize. So. Take all counts off mail m m message. That's basically format. Oh, window. You really need to format worry about here. Message. Let's look at let's look at messages. Send again. Command Shift D. Reply Command R. Command R to reply. Reply all. Command Shift R. Command Shift R to reply to everybody if it's a group message. Forward Command Shift F. Command Shift F to forward. Forward as attachment. Forward as attachment. There's no key for that, but I guess you could select it here. Redirect command shift E. Yep, so. Format. And then format, this is where you can send to your text and. Show fonts command T. Show colors command shift C. Colors. List. Style. Messages. So, table. Those, remember, just the file menu is your friend. VO and the letter M. Go through what menu want, whether it's view, messages, or whatever the case may be. All right, let's check some mail. I have everything mail or inbox. We'll talk about favorites in a little bit. Two message conversation. So I'm in the mailbox already, but let's go back to uh, let's go back over here. Toolbar. It's a toolbar. I'll show you what's in it. Filter group. There's a filter. Get mail. Get mail. New message. Archive button, delete button, junk button, reply button, reply all button, forward button, flag, mute, move group, search button, search button, right. search out of toolbar. Everything that's in that toolbar, you can either do through the menu bar or with shortbook, the shortcut um, keys that we've already talked about. So, right next to the toolbar is mailboxes, table, Apple everything, 62 unread, selected. All right, so he told me that I'm at the mailboxes table. What well, mailbox is in, and how many messages is in it? Now, <sighs> some of you seem to think that you can use the jump command to go to mailboxes in the table. You actually can, but you just can't go backwards. So if you're gonna jump to it, you're gonna have to stop interacting to go back, or keep on jumping until you get back to where you want. I don't use that method, but I'll. Sh I'm in the vertical splitter mailboxes table. I'm in the mailboxes, mailboxes table. Table important. There's another mailbox has no other name. Apple so. everything. 62 unread. So I'm going to jump or use the VO jump command VOJ, which actually stands for go to next linked item as we discussed in the last class session. So I'm going to do that command to see where it lands me. In messages table, two message conversation collapsed. Up. All right. He said it landed, it landed me in the messages table. But again, it's not going to, if I use the VO jump command again, in toolbar 13 it jumps me back to the toolbar in mailboxes table in mailboxes in messages table and and back to the messages table so you can keep on using that command if you so choose I choose to interact and interact so I can go backwards and forwards I'm not a, a big fan of that so I'm in the mailboxes table two message conversation all right this is a conversation now if you use quick nav you can open the conversation you use the VO keys and the backslash to expand a conversation or to open it up the conversation expanded you said he said expand if you want to close it you hit it VO backslash again collapsed now with quick nav off quick nav off 
to expand the conversation, you just hit the right arrow. Rel 25 expanded. To collapse it, you hit the left arrow. Rel 25 collapsed. All right. So, to open it up, we're going to open up the conversation with right arrow because I'm still quick nav is still off. Rel 25 expanded. And then we'll arrow down to the message. Unread. Richarge underscore Turner at Comcast dot net. 10. 37 a.m. Hello. I updated the VI phone to address. Now, that is the message, but I actually haven't even opened up the message. Um, to do that, I would hit enter. Making sure my address book is correct now. No need to reply. Apple everything. When All right, so. Close. Apple everything. I clap. I closed the message, but if I wanted to get into the body of the full message, I would stop interacting. Out of messages table. And go over to the right. Vertical split. Vertical splitter. Now, there's no message body, even though my um I got out of the message and tried to come over. The reason there is no message body is because I have this vertical splitter. This vertical splitter expanded or all the way up to 100 to keep my messages as new when I read them. If I want to look at the message body by stop interacting with the table or stop inter um, opening up the message, then I can interact with this tool or this vertical splitter. And vertical splitter. And move it down. 65, 60, 50, 50, 45, 30, 30, 25%. Yep, 25% is what I think it needs to be at. Now, if I stop interacting. Out of vertical splitter. No message selected. Oh, it says no message selected. So let's go select the message. Vertical split messages. Table. In message. Richard underscore Turner at Comcast. All right. I have that message highlighted. So let's stop interacting with the messages table. Out of messages table. And we'll go. Vertical splitter. That's the vertical splitter, and what's next? Good news. We do see our own messages. <laughs> the body of the message. And if I wanted to interact with it, I could. In good news, we do see our, at least, uh, Richard. Insertion right. at beginning of text. And out of Richard underscore Turner. Quick nav on. The other thing that this is vertical would do. Vertical split messages. In mess Richard underscore Turner. At two message conversation. Expanded. Now, this message is expanded. Or this co uh, conversation is expanded, but I'm going to collapse it. Collapsed. Now, now that I've select or I've collapsed it, but what happens because that vertical splitter is still on 25%? If I stop interacting with this table, the messages table, out of vertical splitter, the vertical splitter is there and it's still at 25%. Message content. It'll tell me there's message content. 13 message converse, 4 message, 13 message, out of ver message content, in M. Taylor, Dennis Long. All right, there we go. So now we have a 13 message conversation here, and because... Out of vertical split messages, table, 13 message conversation, collapsed, unread, Louise at gmail.com. All right, so that mess, this, this conversation is collapsed. Vertical splitter. But I'm going to go past the vertical splitter. Message content. And it says message content. And if I interact here in message content, M. Taylor, new line. Hello all. Okay, I just modified the group settings so that all email replies should go to the entire list. As okay, so that's the first message. And I, before I I I expanded the message in the messages table, but now I stopped interacting with the messages table, and I'm in message content. And now I can read each individual message without um expanding it because I'm not in that table anyway I'm in the message content which is gonna give me each message as I want to read it Dennis long new line testing 123 M Taylor new line hello Dennis Adrian Louise at gmail.com Carolyn Arnold new line Th Richard Turner new line so you see those messages are there with different names now if I hit enter or o uh, command O it will open one of those messages but I'm not going to do that. Out of vertical splitter. I'm actually calling In it. vertical splitter. Put my vertical splitter back up to 100. Thir four, one, one hundred. And let me explain what that does again. Out of vert By putting my vertical splitter on 100, it doesn't mark my messages as red as I navigate past them. If I put it down to 25%, yes, it'll put the message content on the right for me to go interact with. But it will also make my messages red when I go past them, even if I don't open them. So, again, let's go over this one more time. To expand a conversation with voice or with quick nav on, you're going to hit 
hold down the voiceover keys or the modifier of your choice and hit the backslash. That is the key all the way to the right, right below the backspace or delete key, whichever you choose to call it. If quick nav is off, you will hit the right arrow to expand, the left arrow to collapse. Don't forget to interact with the table so you can see what your message subject lines are. I really don't want to do this, but <clears throat> I guess I'm not going to have to. Let's go turn column view on Menu so you can see what that looks like. Map, fuck, edit, view. 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 Show, show, sort by, filter, use column, show side, pre use column layout. Use column layout, checked. Alright, column layout is checked. Toolbar. Now, I'm all the way over to the right. The tool, or, I'm sorry, to the left. Toolbar. Mailboxes, table. Yes. Apple everything, 52 unread. Selected. Here's my mailboxes table. Vertical splitter. Messages table. And here's my messages. Horizontal splitter. Horizontal splitter. Messages table. In messages Word. table. Conversation status. Unread image. Now you see the difference. Before. Con three message converse. Two message conversation. Collapsed. Four message conversation. All right. This is the converse. Th these are the messages. But the next column. If I. This is what column view is. If I go to the right. Status unread image. Status is unread. From Scott and Keenan. From subject RWP adjusting fade and out. There's a subject date received three message. So the first column is conversation. The next one is status unread image. Status, which means and it told me that it was unread. From Pam Coffee via groups. Io Tom. How who it's from? So it's a conversation. It was going to read more than one name. Subject I Subject. Date received. Yeah. And date received. Conversation. And it's, it's reading conversation again because it's going to the next conversation. So let me go turn my column view off because I don't like it. Let's talk about filter or uh, not filters but favorites. So again, I I, I I can't really demonstrate a whole lot with reading messages. That's something you're gonna have to see what works for you. So just remember to interact with the conversations or with the messages table to um, go through your messages interact with the mailboxes table to go through and see what mailbox you want to get to once you get to the mailbox you want you can either VOJ or stop interacting and VO right arrow to the mailbox or the messages table get into it and however you're navigating whether it's with quick nav or um, VO keys just remember to Collapse and expand with voiceover uh, with quick nav off is right arrow to expand left arrow to collapse if you're using quick nav it's VO keys or the modifier of your choice and backslash to expand and repeat the action to collapse now as it relates to favorites you can have favorites one through nine so I have my first one is Apple everything message all right then my number two is important Amazon. These are the name of my mailboxes. Number three is empty table. Well, it says empty table, but it's a, it's my Amazon and receipts folder. Number four is my all inboxes. All inboxes unread, as it just told you. And I have a bills folder. Empty table, and it's empty also. So to get something in the favorites, vertical splitter mailboxes table. Go to your mailboxes table to interact. In mailboxes table. Find the mailbox you want to add. And I have mine already set up, so let me go to one that's not. All on I inbox six unread. J set junk three unread. All right, this is not in my favor, so and I'm not gonna add it. There. I'm just gonna show you. You want to do VO Shift M menu. You can either arrow down. New mailbox ellipsis. Add to favorites. Add to favorites. You would VO space bar or hit enter junk three unread now to remove something from favorites favorites apple everything 54 unread all right you would do vo shift m again menu and i would hit the letter r remove from favorites i'm not going to hit enter a field space bar because it'll remove it and i want to keep it there new mailbox ellipsis and you can also move messages apple around everything. manually 50. so let's go to my all inboxes all inboxes all inboxes 154 unread Collapsed messages table unread Jennifer now he just told you all that information because I hit VO or not VO I hit command 4 the number 4 not F4 command 
four, it automatically put me in the mailboxes table. Toolbar. Mailboxes. Actually, I'm sorry, it didn't. Vertical so, messages. I got to interact with the messages. Unread. Jennifer. In messages. Unread. Misty Hagen. Unread. Unread. Jennifer. Crispy Keto Egg Rolls. Ta All right, Crispy Keto Egg Rolls. This is a message that comes directly from my Gmail because I forwarded it here and it's not sorted. So, in order to move a message, I can do VO Shift M. Menu. Hit the letter M. Mark as red. Mark as red. Move to. Or I hit the M twice and it'll just say move to. I'll VO right arrow. Move to all inboxes. I don't want to move to all inboxes. I got a uh, folder called Kettle Recipes, so I hit the letter K. Kettle Recipes. How about that? Unread. Paula Weber. And that move message has been moved. So, to repeat, if you want to move a message to a particular mailbox, do VO, Shift, the letter M twice, and that'll get you to the move option. VO right arrow, and define the mailbox that you want. Hit enter or VO space bar, and it'll move it there. Now, if you want to just mark the message as red, then hit the letter M. If it's already red, and you want to mark, or, or if it's red, if it's not, what is it? Um, if it's not red, you can mark it as red. If it's already red, you can mark it as unread. So, last order of business, um, you can do the command F for the search. Again, if you have any questions, or you didn't understand something, feel free to email us. TTJTech, I'm sorry, is that, no, support at TTJTech.net. And ask your question, and if it's not a quick answer, I'll cover it in the interactive, interactive session on Wednesday at 2 Eastern, 1 Central, 12 Mountain, and 11 Pacific. So, that is your mail app on More With The Mac. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.